Hello and welcome to another Pro Forma Models real-time financial modeling session. This session will highlight how to model real estate rent growth, but the concept of this session are applicable to modeling many other applications of contractual recurring revenue. I am setting up the structure of our concept overview as a table with columns for five years of analysis. The rows of the table for our analysis will start with in-place rent which will be an input for year 1 and equal to the prior year ending rent for years 2 through 5. The remaining three inputs required for our analysis include new lease rent growth, renewal rent growth, and turnover. We will use the input assumptions to calculate the ending rent for the period as well as the achieved rent growth. As I mentioned, in-place rent will be an input for year 1 using the current rent for the unit while years 2 to 5 in-place rent will be equal to the prior year ending rent. New lease rent growth and renewal rent growth are input as a percentage growth off the in-place rent. For example, if you think in year 1 the unit would rent for 6% more rent if it was vacant and leased at market, input 6%. If you believe the unit would get 4.5% rent growth renewing the existing tenant, input 4.5%. Turnover is a percentage input for the probability of the unit turning vacant. For example, a 50% turnover input would assume a 50% probability that the in-place tenant will turn over and vacate the rental unit. We will use $1,000 as the starting year 1 in-place rent. We will enter our expected new lease rent growth assumptions by year next. This is followed by inputs for our renewal rent growth assumptions. In this example, we will offer a 1.5% discount to market rent for renewal rates in an effort to retain tenants. Our final assumption is for turnover, which is the probability of the renter vacating and requiring the unit to be turned and released at market. We now have all the required assumptions and can calculate ending rent. The first section of the formula is for new lease rent, which is equal to the in-place rent multiplied by 1 plus the new lease rent growth and multiplied by the turnover ratio. The second section of the calculation focuses on the renewal rent growth and is equal to in-place rent multiplied by 1 plus the renewal rent growth and then multiplied by 1 minus the turnover probability. The turnover ratio assumption is the probability of the unit turning vacant and needing to be released at market. This means that the inverse of the turnover ratio, calculated as 1 minus the turnover ratio, is equal to the retention ratio, which is the probability of retaining the tenant and renewing their lease at the renewal rate. Next we can calculate our achieved blended rent growth as the ending rent divided by the starting in place rent minus 1. You will see that the achieved rent growth in our example lies between the new lease and renewal rent growth as the ending achieved rent being modeled is a probability of achieving each situation. We can calculate a quick check to ensure that our math checks out for forecasting rents. We know the achieved new lease rent growth will be equal to the turnover ratio multiplied by the new lease rent growth assumption. We also know the achieved renewal rent growth will be equal to 1 minus the turnover ratio multiplied by the renewal rent growth assumption. The sum of the achieved new lease rent growth and achieved renewal rent growth in our check will be equal to the achieved rent growth calculated by dividing the ending rent divided by the in-place rent minus 1. As you can see in our example, the check is equal to zero in each year showing that our check rent growth is equal to the calculated rent growth. Pro Forma Models employs a more advanced version of the concept we just walked through in our real estate financial models. On screen, we are sharing an example rental revenue model from our core multifamily real estate investment model. The Pro Forma Models Multifamily Revenue Projection Module is complex and forecasts rates on a per-unit basis. Due to this level of detail, additional input information is provided. All of this information should be readily available from a seller or broker and is industry standard. The model is preformatted for up to 100 units, but the revenue model can be expanded by copying the final row down as many times as needed. 
The first input in the revenue model is for the unit number, which is useful for referring to individual unit level information. The second input is for the corresponding floor plan to the unit number. The floor plan drives the look UPS for the new lease rent growth and renewal rent growth, making it an incredibly important input. Please note the floor plan in the revenue model must tie exactly to the floor plan's input in the assumption tab. The third input is for the square footage of the unit, which is used for calculating price, value, and rent numbers on a per square foot basis. The move-in, expiration, and move-out dates by unit are input, which drives the calculation of the expiration date and expiration month. The dates drive the turnover calculations as the rents will change the month following the expiration of the in-place lease. The final input into the rental revenue forecast module is the current in-place rent for the unit, which will serve as the starting point for the rental revenue forecast. Please note that if a unit is currently vacant, leave the move-in, expiration, and move-out date as well as the in-place rent input as empty. The rental revenue forecast module will forecast these units at market rent as of day one with turnover occurring on the month following the anniversary of the closing date on an annual recurring basis. The calculation of the revenue forecast is complex but can be summarized of having three logic components. The first logic component is to check if the unit is vacant. If the unit is vacant, the rent is forecasted at market rates immediately with rent growth to occur on the annual anniversary of closing. The second logic component is to check if the unit is occupied and expiring. If the unit is occupied and expiring, the rental rate forecasted in the month following expiration is equal to the sum of in-place rental rate grown at the renewal rent growth assumption multiplied by 100% less the percentage turnover plus the market rental rate for the current year multiplied by the turnover assumption. This calculation essentially calculates the summed conditional probability of the unit turning over to market and the unit renewing at the renewal rate and utilized the blended rental rate calculated as the new rate. The third and final logic component is to check if the unit is occupied and not turning over in the current month. If this logic check is true and the unit continues to be occupied mid-lease, the current rental rate is continued and carried through the monthly forecast period. This is an institutional approach to forecasting rental revenue. It may seem complex, but pro forma models has created the rental revenue forecast in a standardized methodology that will provide consistent and quality forecasting regardless of the property being analyzed. If you would like to utilize our real estate rental revenue models, we have multiple affordable model options available at pro forma models. Please visit our website, like, and subscribe for more free financial modeling content. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this pro forma models walkthrough and encourage you to visit our website to try the model for yourself.